This is the day that the Lord has made. Indeed, we will celebrate and be glad in it. Choose Life International is delighted to come to you today with yet another webinar. Yes, we started in April of last year as we sought to find ways to be able to just help empower people as we go through the pandemic. The pandemic continues and so does the webinar. It is our 100 and uh, ninth. 11th, 111th. Oh, sorry, 111th webinar. I can't keep count. <laughs> and it is such a delight to have our team members with us, to have some persons who have missed. Only a few of the webinars, it's also a delight to have those who, have, who are here for the very first time. You know, God has used this medium to be able to just share the stories uh, of transformation in people's lives and to empower others. And it is a delight to have Nashana Lala as our special guest today. I met her in the context of the Honeybone Foundation uh, course, and she has been such an inspiration. And we have with us, no stranger to this platform, our moderator. It is now after um, 11 o'clock where she is operating from, but we value her input. And she has really just made a sacrifice over these months over this year to share with us and we say we are we welcome karen we want to just welcome all of you who are here to share with us today if you are here for the first time and you'd like to be a part of our mailing list we invite you to just share your contact information in the chat your email addresses and um, yeah, just share us your email address and we will add you to our mailing list. It is my delight right now to invite my wife. Yes, I know some of you are attempting to finish that. <laughs> song, I'm fine. 35 years, thank you, Karja. Oh, wow. To, um, to, to come to the fore and to um, do a prayer. So Faith, it's so good to have you over these years as partner in life and these webinars, co-founder of Choose Life International, director of our counseling program. And I ask you right now to just say a word to our wonderful audience and our special guest and just welcome uh, all the people and pray. Thank you so much, Donovan. Welcome, 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 everyone. It's just so good to have you with us today. Yes, as Donovan said, it is our 111th webinar. And we have, for the first time, a special guest, Nashona Lala. That's how it's pronounced? Lala? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That sounds like every time we call your name, we should laugh. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> oh, exactly. My. Yes, it's a lovely name. Thank so you. welcome, Nashana. And Thank of you, course, sir. we extend to our moderator, Karen. Karen looks like she is bright and beautiful as usual. Awake uh -huh. at this time <laughs> of the night. Thank you so much again to you there, my dear Karen. Thank All you. right. Now, gentle people, we want you to, 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 to share today's webinar with any of your friends or, you know, family. Just send a link to them and tell them, yes, we are on and you got to be here to hear Nashana's story. So without any further ado, we're going to pray. Father, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for your grace and your mercies towards us. And we just invite your presence into our webinar. We ask, Lord, that whatever we do, whatever we say, will bring honor and glory to your great name. Lord, have your own way. Bring the persons out from the east and the west and the north and the south. 
and cause that we will have a great time together. Bless everything and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much, Faith. You know, the month of, of May is traditionally known as Child's Month in Jamaica. And we decided this month that we will go deliberately for interacting and interviewing uh, younger persons. And we have had some really um, outstanding young persons so far, younger persons so far. And I've heard comments, Faith, like Jamaica is in good hands. As people have listened to these stories and we have an outstanding young woman um, today, young lady, Nashana, who smiles a lot, but beneath the smile, <laughs> there's so much depth and our organizational skills, Faith, are just so outstanding. And I met her in the, in the context of the strategic roadmap course offered by the Honeybone Foundation. She's been such a support. And we're talking about um, empowering others. And that's what um, she has been known for. And that's what she, we'll be talking about later. So we have um, a special shout out to anybody that is here from the Honeybone Foundation. I say <laughs> special welcome as you come to support um, Nashana and to hear her outstanding story um, today. So before you, before you, you hand over to our moderator, Karen, even as you spoke about having younger persons, tomorrow at six o'clock, we are going to have Carice Oakley Williams. And she is 17 years old and she's an author. She's still in high school. She's Jamaican. So you definitely have to come out to the webinar tomorrow. So we'll tell you some more about it later. So Faith, I don't know, you, you remember that Karen is a registered psychotherapist and um, in the UK. She specializes in treatment of eating disorder and AFT accredited supervisor she is for hope bereavement support. She provides counseling support in group as well as individuals. She has a, a special emphasis on helping people from the black, Asian and minority ethnic communities as they grieve. Uh, former leader for walks for health taking mental health treatment outside of the therapy room and incorporating unique methods in clinical practice in center, central is central to her concept of isomorphic mattering in which the inherent value of individuals and transgenerational communities through corporate learning is key to social well-being. Karen is columnist for BAC P Workplace International Trainer and Lecturer and is also co-editor of the International Handbook for Black Community Mental Health published by Emerald Publishing Limited. Karen, it is such a delight to have you. We value your participation with us as, co -host, as host tonight, but more so as volunteer with Choose Life International as you come to us today from England at after 11 p.m. <laughs> over to you as you leave. Thank you very much, Donovan, uh, for that lovely introduction and uh, Faith as well, for your wonderful prayers as well. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to introduce Nishana Lala, uh, our wonderful guest tonight. And uh, Nishana has been actively involved in volunteerism both locally and internationally for more than 20 years. Well, she doesn't look older than 20 actually, so I can hardly believe that. <laughs> but I know her passion for speaking to her before. As a member of the Geneva, Switzerland-based World Council of Young Women's Christian Association, she has traveled extensively promoting the economic and show social empowerment of young women and their families across the world. 
as the sole Caribbean entrepreneur. Um, oh, where have you gone? Sorry, well, entrepreneur and representative of the uh, council for four years. She advocated for the improvement of living conditions of women in Jamaica and the region as she attended and presented at the international NGO conferences and forums in Europe, Africa, South and Central America. Such a noble position that is. Nashana is an accomplished communications manager with over 16 years of experience working in media she was previously the lifestyle editor at the Gleaner Company Media Limited. Wow. <laughs> and I know the Gleaner because we do get it over here. Okay. Um, the youngest person to have been appointed to the position at that time. So she's a real trailblazer. She's also held the role of entertainment editor, responsible for the daily entertainment offering of the Gleaner and the star before joining the Honey Bun family in July 2019 as the general manager of the Honey Bun Foundation. Welcome, Nishana. Thank you, Karen. Wow, you have done so much and influenced so many, both nationally and internationally, and it's an absolute honor to be able to meet with you and talk with you today. Thank you so much. So we're just going to have sort of like an informal conversation, find out a little bit more about you, and also to hear um, so much more about the things that you've been doing. And uh, I think that's really going to influence a lot of young women, also men too, but also it's a wonderful thing for young women to hear. So. Uh, Lashana, where did you grow up? <laughs> well, thank you first, Karen. Let me just tell you that I told Donovan, Donovan, I don't think I'm the right person for this because I've spent all my life as a journalist telling other people's stories. So talking about myself is <laughs> not really my forte. But I grew up in rural Jamaica, in Craighead, Manchester. And that is really, really rural Manchester. So I am a country girl. I am proud of it. Because I tell people, hey, I'm a country girl. They're like, oh, you're, and I'm like, I'm from Manchester. They're like, oh, Mandeville. I'm like, no, rural Manchester. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I was raised by my grandmother. I grew up in Craighead, Manchester, as I said before. I went to Knox College, which I'm very, 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 very proud of. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of my classmates are actually on. So straight up, I'm a country girl. Oh, Wow. That sounds amazing. And growing up with your grandmother, I guess there's lots of nuggets of wisdom there, I'm yes. sure. That was amazing. I think who I am today is because I was raised by her. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am today. Wow. That is just amazing. I think it's really important that we honour the elders, isn't it, really, for what they pour in to young people. And, uh, you know, being so very, very proud. So tell me a little bit about, you know, the schools that you attend. You said that um, um, you grew up in Craighead, Manchester. Um, <laughs> so there, there, it looks like you had uh, quite an um, education. So take us through that. Okay, so my, I started out my education at Shirley the Costa Basic School. You know, the name so I mean, Though, looking back in retrospect, it was really a blessing and a pleasure to grow up in the country. It was really amazing. So I started out at Shirley the Costa Basic School, and then I moved on to Craighead All Age School. And then for those first, I'm not as young as I look. So I passed my, at those days you had common entrance. Mm. Um, person, some of the persons on tonight would remember common entrance. Now they have, um, they had six. See, I forget what they had before, and now they have PEP. But this was way preceding that. So I passed my common entrance in grade six, and then I went to Knox High School, which is in Clarendon. Now, Knox oh. is, yes, Knox is technically on the border of Clarendon and Manchester, but it's some, some distance. So you had to get up very, very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I had to leave home at about six o'clock in the morning, and you would take a bus to the closest town, which was in Cristiano. And then you would take a taxi from Cristiano that would either yes. drop you 
at the bottom of the hill where you walk up to Knox, or if you're lucky, you can pay them extra and they take you up to the hill. I think in second form, we had a bus company that would pick us up right from our gate and take us straight to school, drop us on campus, and then they would come back, pick us up from campus and take us straight back home. So it included leaving home early and getting home late. Wow. So your yeah. entire life was about school. Um, if anybody here is familiar with the country, they would have heard of Colleyville. And it's as cold as the name states. If there's ever going to be snow in Jamaica, that's going to be the first place oh. it will fall. <laughs> so a sweater was a regular part of our daily lives because it was so cold. So wow. yeah, I'm just a humble country girl. Okay. I can't imagine it being cold there, actually. When, uh, freezing. Uh, but freezing. Okay. Well, that was, um, you know, a, a real... Um, trial to do all that getting up at six and getting back home at late but there was something about being consistent and steadfast yeah. I guess really to have passed your your common entrance you know you obviously had a sort of a vision about where you wanted to go and what you wanted to do so what happened off after that yeah but just to say that it wasn't such a trial because that's what you were used to Growing up with your grandmother, you had to get up early because she's like, you know, do you have to fall on you or you wouldn't grow? So getting right. up early was, wasn't, you know, an issue. I think the big dreams weren't necessarily mine, <laughs> to be honest. The big dreams were that of my grandmother. Okay. She had 11 children and she one had died and she was raising me as her granddaughter. And mm -hmm. she had this dream of me being something bigger than my humble beginnings. Um, I don't know specifically what the dreams were, but she had big dreams for me. And yeah. so education for her, even though she, does, she didn't have more than a primary school education, mm -hmm. and she got married when she was 18, but she, she had this big dream for me and she knew how important education was. So she instilled that in me. So I know that my books took new, number one. So mm -hmm. outside of getting up early to go to school, spending all day at school, coming home, you do your assignment, you know, on the weekends, you know, you have weekend chores, but after the weekend chores, it was books, books, books. So she really emphasized the importance of education. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was, when I started high school, because she was so proud that I got into Knox, because in Manchester, in that region, Knox is the school. You only really? got in if you did really well in your common interest was at the top school. So she was very, very proud of that. And so when I was in high school, I actually thought of becoming a doctor. I had two nurses in my family. My grandmother, she was she had high blood pressure. And so I wanted to become a doctor because I thought I could just give her a pill and it would yes. make those headaches go away. Mm -hmm. So that was my thing to be a doctor. But then I realized in, I think it was, so I had all the sciences. Uh, you started out with general science in third form, chemistry, physics. But then I think it was in third form, I realized that I did not like the sight of blood. There's an incident at school that a lot of blood was involved. I got very weak between behind the knees and I'm like, okay, this medicine thing is not going to work out. Okay. Yeah, so that, you know, um, you know, you, you came from a, a place of benevolence, really, in terms of wanting to help, wanting to cure. So you had that, that way about you already, you know, that community spirit about wanting to heal and help and, and uh, support. And I uh, can totally understand that with many uh, young people, when they see somebody that they care about, um, you know unwell or in need of something that you know they think what can I do in order to sort of not just pay back but also make proud but also you know um, um, put something back into the family as well okay so you know you you decided that wasn't your route uh, after all that actually somebody else can <laughs> heal your auntie <laughs> yeah it yeah. wasn't for me um, if maybe you can, maybe those who are on can almost tell that I had the gift of gab. I tend to talk a lot. And so my uncles and everybody were like, you chat so much, you should be a lawyer. I never saw myself in the courtroom. I wasn't exposed to what the legal field was there. in Manchester. Yeah. So that wasn't my thing. 
but I like talking. I like literature. I like reading. I like writing because I grew up around books. One of my uncle was a teacher, so he had all his books there. I read all of the books because that's what you do. You know, you read in the country. And so when watching TV and watching the news in the night, I thought, hey, I could be on TV reading the news. I like to talk. The ladies, they look, they were just so poised and they look so, you know, it was, there were yes. people who I admired, the people who read the news. That was a big thing. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be on TV reading the news. <laughs> that was it. So immediately, even though I was studying so hard for the sciences, biology and all, the literature, English language and English literature came very easy to me. I didn't yeah. have to study for those. It was just mm-hmm. a natural thing. So I thought I'm going to go into journalism. Okay. And where did you study there? Okay, so after I left Knox, I went to Excelsior Community College to do my A levels because okay. at that time my school didn't have a it didn't have a sixth form. So basically, I migrated to Kingston. My parents were in Kingston all the time. Right. So my dad, yeah, my dad brought me up to Kingston, and I went to Excelsior Community College to do my A levels. And then after that, I went to the University of the West Indies. <clears throat> so I did get in in my first year, and my major was literature. However, because after my first, okay, so I started out doing literature because you had to pass the, for Caramac, which is the Caribbean Institute of Media and Communication. It was for the region, for all the islands of the Caribbean, and they only took 50 students per year because wow. it was a very small thing at that time. Mm-hmm. So after my first year do majoring in literature, I took the entrance exam for Caramac and I did pass, thank God. So immediately at that point, I thought I could do much good writing rather than being on TV because oh, then okay. I could make a dip, I could hide behind my name and people wouldn't always see my face and immediately know who I am and you know what I did so even though my first introduction to journalism was TV when I went to Caramac I decided to major in um, print journalism so and I think this whole thing of helping people and making a difference it was all based on what my grandmother taught me not directly but just how I saw her she's always helping the other people in the community Mm -hmm. always Mm -hmm. giving them of what she had so it Mm -hmm. wasn't specific lesson where she sat me down and you know it was just how she lived her life Mm -hmm. and so that was how that was absorbed into me how based on me watching what she did so children learn by what they see and so that's what I saw and so I thought I'm a journalist. I'm so powerful. Everything that's wrong in the country, I'm going to write about it and they're going to have right. to change it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you wanted to go, you wanted to be in the field then rather than you said on the screen, you want to be out in the field as a journalist, seeing and meeting people and hearing their stories and um, being inspired for them and other people uh, being inspired uh, to help and support and telling people stories you know so being a storyteller and getting your name known in that way okay and so you know in terms of that sort of area of work what do you think were your most uh, significant achievements then oh my gosh I don't like talking about my achievements but I think it was a major achievement for me to be um, selected to the world board of the Young Women's Christian Association just some backstory as to how I got into volunteerism. When I was in fifth form at Knox, I was involved in Rangers Club. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the bigger one for the brownies. And mm. part of that is that you had to do 80 hours of community service. So I came up in the summer and I gave the paper to my stepmom and I'm like, I have to do 80 hours of community service. She <laughs> literally went into the directory, searched and called the places. When she called the YWCA, they had an opening for a camp counselor. And so I didn't have anything to do during the summer. So I went there as a camp counselor. After camp was finished, you know, they were impressed. So they kept me on helping out in the office until that was right before I started university. So, you know, I went there the first summer after it was finished. I helped in the office. They, uh, They invited me back before you knew it. I was a member of the YWCA. It was a lot of older women, so I was one of the few younger ones, but I loved them. I grew up with my grandmother, so I loved mm. being around those mm. type of women. And then when the World Council was coming up to be on the board, they needed 50% young women who were under 30. And so they nominated me to be on the World Board. 
ah, na my young girl. I do. I was like, okay, no problem. I mean, I knew that we were empowering young women because the YWC had a school labor's institution. That's the one on Honor Road where girls who, for one reason, whether it's disciplinary or they got pregnant, had to leave school. That school labor's institution was to help them back into the formal education oh. system after they've gone through. Yeah. So they nominated me to the World Board. I was like, okay, fine, no problem. Uh, went to Australia. It was my first time traveling on a plane. Took three days to get there. It was, <laughs> yeah. So I was among all these women. I had been involved with the Y for a while, so I knew what were, their work was about. I was passionate about it because it was the same thing I thought I was doing in the media because I worked with the, on the women's magazine, Flair, which I just went to the Greeno. So we went to Australia for the World Council and we had our election. I made my presentation and they nominated me. It's a country girl from Manchester is now on the world board of the YWCA. Along with 20 other women, we're running this global organization that's in 100, over 100 countries at that time. And it's about women empowerment. It's about mm -hmm. violence against women, it, you know, mm -hmm. gender-based violence. It was about mm -hmm. the economic empowerment because you realize that that's some of the reason why they're victims of abuse and everything is mm -hmm. because they're economically disadvantaged. Yeah. And that was so for me to be the only Caribbean representative on that at that time, it was it was amazing. It opened your eyes to really see the world. Mm -hmm. It shows you how much bigger than yourself the world is. And so I would say, again, I don't like talking about, but I would say that would be my greatest achievement because in that time I saw the difference that I could make and I'd like to think that I did make some difference in the lives of women in the world and I mean we're talking about women in Kenya in Tanzania mm -hmm. and so to see that I could you know make a decision that would affect their lives and their economic standing that and their children's lives that was just mind-blowing to me that hey little me did this so for me personally, to see the difference I could make globally, you know, as a young woman, then that was really eye-opening and that was a great, I would say that was a great achievement for me as an individual. Very much so. And I was just wondering, you know, could you think of sort of one or two decisions that you made that had that lasting effect at that time? Um, one of the things, and even today I still keep up with it, was at that time, female genital mutilation was a big thing, especially in African countries. And so the organization always lobbied against that. And so we would, uh, they would always have us go to meetings around the world. You talk about meeting with the World Bank and all these major corporations to lobby against that and to raise our hand and vote against that. And to see that in the coming years, you keep seeing country after country saying, okay, this practice is now illegal because we, we heard the trauma. We saw the victim impact stories. We met with the young women who have been so traumatized by this experience. Yeah. We went to the villages. We educate the elders on the reason why you shouldn't do this to, your, to the girls, you know? And so to see countries after countries, you know, you know, actually getting to the government level for them to ban this and say, okay, the practice of female genital mutilation is wrong. I mean, that was just, I mean, even to today, from time to time, you'll see another country that banned it. And so that, that was really, that is one of the, the causes that's close to my heart because I know how traumatic something like that is. And so having worked with the YWCA in getting a few, some countries to abolish that and the work continues has been one of my proudest moments. Mm -hmm. oh, congratulations. I think that, as you said, it's a very important piece of uh, work and lobbying as well. You know, uh, in one of the areas that I support um, supervised teams, we are also involved in supporting um, clients who have experienced that. So. You know, it, it's uh, so there's that connection, I guess, uh, between us uh, around that, and um, and those things are very important, and to be able to have a voice to speak about those things as well, and also the, as well, and it's important that we know that there are that the men also there are many men who are very very supportive as well in these areas. So that's wonderful to hear that. So um, tell me about the. Honey Bun Foundation and you know how did you find your way into that role? Okay well 
as I went through journalism and working with the female newspaper and also health section and all of that, <clears throat> I still saw that I was making a difference through my writing, through educating people about different things. And also whenever the, I could, within the context of a journalist, advocate for women's rights. But I always knew that I wanted my, my life to be what I did, because I just did this was voluntarism. This is what I did when I had free time. I wanted that to be my full-time job. And so I actually put it out into the universe and say yeah. that, Lord, I would want my, what pays my salary to be working with an NGO. And so I actually met with the founder of the Honey Bun Foundation, Michelle Chong. This was before she was mm -hmm. thinking of a foundation. This was before we knew the Honey Bun Foundation would exist. And we were just sharing, you know, what we would like to do to help Jamaica and the world. And, you know, so we had that conversation. We went to our separate ways. And then that was it. About six months later, she called me and she, you know, because we, we're talking about national development and how we could contribute to developing Jamaica economically, socially. And then about six months later, she called me up and she said she would like to do this foundation. And with my experience working with NGO, how does it work? And so, you know, I started to tell her how an NGO works and you know, we mm -hmm. had that conversation. And then that was that. Then about another six months after, she came back and she's like, I'm thinking of doing this foundation. She told me what it was about. And so I started helping her organizing it and, you know, everything again, just giving her based on my experience working with NGOs, because after the YWCA, I am currently on the executive board of CVSS, which is a council of voluntary social services, all NGOs and charities in Jamaica fall mm -hmm. under that. They're the umbrella organization. So I was giving her my expertise or what knowledge I had. And then a few months, so this is over the span of say a year, a year and a half, she came back to me and said, oh, by the way, I'd want you to head up my foundation. Uh -huh. And so, she grew. So, <laughs> so like, okay, God, you're telling me to do this. I took six months. I thought about it. And then I left my job that I was doing for 17 years, what I, was, what I studied for at university and went to head up the Honeybun Foundation as a general manager. Just to say that the Honeybun Foundation is for SMEs and the creative industry. So we're about building models. Um, it's basically mm -hmm. capacity building for them. And so I saw where, again, I could be connected to something bigger than myself in helping my country because, as, I mean, everybody knows, well, maybe not everybody, but our SMEs is the largest employer in the country. So the more small companies you can help to grow is the more persons they will employ. The more persons who are employed, hopefully that will have the social impact of less violence because more young people could get a job and our economy will grow. So it was, again, it was a vision that was bigger than me. And just to say that, I think this was what God made me for. So he was just straight in the path. You did this and then that's the next step without me knowing it. You know, so that was how I got involved with the Honeybun Foundation. Wow, so you wrote this vision about what your perfect job was and um, you, uh, you know, achieved that role and then God took you out of that role because you had obviously achieved what you were sent there to do and he had a bigger plan than you had. Um, yes. As you, you know, as you said, in terms of this capacity building, looking at... Um, supporting other organizations, but also in terms of helping the economy, helping uh, people get jobs, encouraging young people, and, uh, and, and helping the economy of, the, of, uh, of Jamaica, really. As well as, as said, your, in terms of the, your networking, your expertise with NGOs as well. Um, so really having your feet on the ground. And um, so it's, it, it, um, you know, when you talk about it, again, in, in impacting people's lives, you know, um, have you any stories about the young people's lives or people's lives who've been impacted from this particular role at the moment? The Isn't current it? role as the Honeybun Foundation? Mm. Well, actually, uh, Donovan, who we met through the Create Your Strategic Roadmap Curriculum, which we developed last year when COVID came and, you know, everybody was like, oh, my God, you know, the economy was really tanking a lot of small companies were really in danger and uh, a lot of webinars were being held to help SMEs to give them the tools they may need so that they could ride out the economic shortfall from COVID but we saw that they weren't structured and so we got together and what the strategic roadmap is it was 12 modules that dealt with different areas of business 
So mm-hmm. each week we did took them through finance, we took them through HR, we took them through leadership, we took them mm-hmm. through marketing. Donovan can tell you, we took them through all of that. It was really intense. We got private sector to sponsor it so we could pay the trainers. And just to say that coming from that, one of the SMEs have actually come to say, hey, my company has grown 15%. Mm. All the companies that we work on in the strategic roadmap are still alive today. Wonderful. So, yeah, so just to show that, mm. okay, so COVID is something like we've never seen. The way of the way that they usually did their business, that was no more. And we had to help them to navigate this very difficult time. We're mm. still in it. But just to say that they've come back, they still keep in touch with me today and they're still thanking me for, you know, helping them. And, you know, just to say that they're still alive today. We get the success stories of them saying, hey, my business has grown from Mm -hmm. this percent to that percent. So that was really encouraging to me to say, hey, you're doing something worthwhile here. You're helping somebody. Mm -hmm. So if at least just one company calls me and say, Nashona, through that course, I'm able to employ three more persons on my business has grown by 5%. Mm-hmm. That that makes you feel like, you know, it makes you feel good because volunteerism is about being connected to something bigger than yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you're connected to something so much bigger than yourself, even personally and maybe even maybe a little bit selfishly, you feel good that you've made such a big difference. Helping people make you feel good. What well, makes me feel good? I don't think it's selfish at all. I think it's a feeling of satisfaction uh, and contentment. And that you are actually, you know, when you feel content in what you're doing, you're you're in the right place. This is where where you were, you know, supposed to be, where you were when you're positioned and you're happy about those things. So I think those things are very important. And I really like the fact that you've been able to tease out some of the successes as well, um, because I think that gives people a lot of hope. Um, Business organisers who think, oh, well, okay, maybe we can reach out and we can get some um, support in that way to help us keep our vision going as well and also those young entrepreneurs who think well you know I had a great idea but you know uh, seeing that's the current time we're in maybe it's not the current time and here you have as a, you, you know you've got so much experience you can just guide people and give them that expert support as well and encouragement and training as well so I think that's really important that people um, do reach out and see that you know um, it's important to invest not just money but also time into keeping their business afloat as because you, you don't know what's going to happen they could actually you know expand as you said that's, and that's what we want them to do we want them to grow exponentially I mean the founder of the Honeybun Foundation Michelle Chong before Honeybun was a company it is now it was a small business Mm-hmm. So she knows what it's like moving her retail bakery from 12 employees to now over 400. Wow. So the, the help is out there, but a lot of SMEs, they don't know where to go to get the help. And so it's really fulfilling to be in a position where we can point them in the right direction of where to go to get the help that they need. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's quite a big responsibility that you have, you know, um, and although it's very exciting, it's cutting edge, you know, there's also when you are on the cutting edge, there is sometimes that's, a, you know, there might be things that will keep you up at night. What are, the, what are those things that keep you up at night around that? Well, right now it's COVID <laughs> yeah. and all, all the other things that COVID brings because mm. everybody, anybody can get it you follow all the protocols but at the same time and Jamaica's economy, our economy is so fragile. We can't take any period of shutdown. I mean, countries all over the world, they're shutting down, they're closing mm. their borders. Unfortunately, we, our economy can't withstand that. So while we did that last year, we're not able to do it consistently. So we continue with our curfew and stuff. But at the same time, the companies that are, I mean, large companies are suffering, but the companies that are suffering the most are the small companies. I mean, the one one payroll that they miss could be the difference between them staying alive, yes. the company staying alive and their people having a job. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then the next day, people not having a job, them mm-hmm. not having their company. So it does keep me up at night, not only for my own health, the health of fellow Jamaicans, the health of my mom, because she's diabetic. So, you know, she's one of those high risk persons. 
And, you know, we can't connect with our friends and everybody where we used to. And there's so many people are in such emotional turmoil. Okay. So knowing that, I mean, whether they're sleepless about their business and, you know, so all of so just COVID and all the, you know, the fallout that can be as a result of this pandemic, really, I think it keeps everybody up at night. So oh. I don't <laughs> think, I don't think I'm unique in that, but just because. I would be so sad to work for another business close. And, you, you know, you've had companies who've had to lay off people. You've sure. had companies who've had to have, uh, you know, they have to have a pay cut. Sure. You know, so, yeah, so it's really <clears throat> emotionally taxing. But at the same time, you know that you're working hard to make a difference. You just have to trust in God and take it one day at a time. Because okay. outside of that, it's all of this is not up to us. We do what we're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, it's all up to him, you know. And so, so back to your original question of what keeps me up at night. That's what keeps me up at night. But I think that keeps people around the world up at night. Oh. But I think globally, we're connected in that way. And so mm. I think we're all bonded together because we have a common enemy that we're fighting, which is COVID-19. So you don't feel alone. And so even though I'm up at night, I know there are others who are up at night thinking about the same thing I might be thinking yeah. about. And we're all working together in different areas, whether it's helping SMEs or in your role as a psychologist and Donovan's role in helping persons who, for whatever reason, you know, they might be having some psychological issues or, you know, they're, they're just overwhelmed. We're no, all absolutely. connected. Yeah. We feel connected in this fight. We're fighting it from different ends, but we're fighting the same enemy. And so that... That's really, you know, it's 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 re reassuring to know that you're not alone. Okay. In that and we're just going to pause there and pass back <laughs> to Donovan to um, give us some updates, and we'll be right back to continue our conversation with you. Wow, what a a young lady, Australian all. What an impact she's making. So I just say to our viewers, our listeners on Facebook, on YouTube, and on the Zoom forum, keep watching because the best of Nashana is yet to come. So <laughs> over her life, and we say thank you, Nashana, for the ways in which you are impacting life. I see Jennifer, one of our my class yes. from um, from the core saying, you are beautiful inside out. And um, she is so grateful. Where is that comment again? Yeah, Nashana is a special person, beautiful inside and outside. I am blessed. She has touched my life. And we are so grateful for the many lives that you're touching and how you've been obedient and just continue to, to walk the path. You know, this month, for the month of May, we are operating under the theme, striving to overcome. And today our sub theme is empowering others. And what a volunteer she has been. Tomorrow, we continue our webinar and we will be talking to a young lady, uh, Miss Carice Oakley Williams. Yeah, she's only 17 years old, already an author. And she has written a book. Yeah, she has an author that has written a book by the name The Paradox of Life. And that's what she'll be talking about tomorrow. Greatness is still in this country. And we want to bring those to the fore. We don't want to wait until they're, they're 50 and over and, and, and getting on. We want to say, we want to expose the young lives that are on cutting edge and the younger lives. Yes. So tomorrow we will continue. Remember also our TV show. One of the things that started since COVID-19, it is called Geared to Live. And it takes place on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on MTM TV. Yes, it is on MTM TV. You can pick it up on Digicel, Channel 19, Flow, Channel 671 and 601. And anywhere you are in the world on mtmtv.com. We have a regular prayer meeting uh, every first, every third Wednesday. Before I, okay, it's there now on the screen. 
on May 19, that is Wednesday coming, 7.30 a.m. Uh, to 8.30 a.m. Jamaican time, we invite you to come and pray with us. We believe in prayer, and we ask you to join us for one hour of prayer. We know you're praying for us other times, but we pray together as a group for that one hour. Same Zoom link, 516-152-2200, and that's the Zoom ID and the password, Choose Life. So please join us. Um, yes, now we have been teaching a course called the art and science of happiness at the college level for the last 11 years. And we did a weekend of uh, teaching the art and science of happiness in March on International Day of Happiness being a part of that weekend there, 20th of March. And it was so good. So it's being offered again, July 9th to 11th. We want to ask you to go to our webs, go to the website, www.theartandscienceofhappiness.com and register by June 1 for the special discount. Anybody in this forum can do it with a little more happiness in your life? <laughs> yes, register and benefit from that and help us to get the word out. We believe that even the difficulties and the challenges that people can emerge happier. Do you want a seminar or a webinar in your organization? Choose Life International does seminars with companies in Jamaica, in the US, in St. Vincent, in England, wherever you are. We are available by Zoom to present these webinars. There are two cutting edge webinars that are going on right now. The uh, it, it, one is managing the psychological, managing psychological impact of COVID-19 and the other um, helping people grieve in a healthy way. Tomorrow I'll be with a, at a company helping them work through the death of a co-worker in the face of the pandemic. And we are just, we are happy we are able to help countries, sorry, companies wherever you are. So please connect with us. Choose Life International is a faith-based organization. Our mission in life is to help people live physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We want to ask you, check out what's going on our website. We have done over 100 webinars, as you have heard before. Most of them are still available on our website and on, and on our YouTube channel. We want to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Choose Life, intl.org. In fact, this um, interview will be on available on you, YouTube at Choose Life International. Check out our Facebook page and our Instagram page. Choose Life International is very delighted that you have come to be with us um, today. At the end of this interaction here on video, on, on Zoom and on YouTube and Facebook, we're going to have upfront and close with, with Nashona for a few minutes. So we invite you to stay behind that we can talk with her a little bit to tell her how much we love her and appreciate her. Nashana, it is such a delight um, to have you. And I agree Thank with you, Jennifer. Man. Beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Karen, thanks again for being our moderator today. I oh. see Mr. Chung somewhere in the, in, in, in the room. <laughs> And I just want to give a shout out to Michelle Chong. It is through you that I met Nashana. And thank you for just the gift of picking her out to be able to fulfill purpose. And we'll give you a chance um, to just say hello right now. Um, un unmute Mrs. Michelle Chong, Stephen, please, as we go back to our next session. Hello, all oh, Nashona. What a fantastic job. I have to go online to learn more about you. <laughs> I was just joking. Yes, I, I was on from early, but I got disconnected and I don't know what happened, but I heard most of the story. And, uh, you know, I say God gives me people, and Nashona was definitely one of them. My daughter told me that. You know, I met her through my daughter and she said, you and Nashona have to connect because both of you share the same dreams. So that is why we could actually speak to each other a year before the foundation. Um, I knew that, you know, God sends me people. Donovan, God sent you to me too. He picks uh -huh. people for me. I am such a blessed child. I mean, God gives me everything I need. I'm spoiled. So he picks you. <laughs> He picked you, Dashana. Thank you, Mrs. Chung. <laughs> so happy he did. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Mrs. Chong. Um, Karen and Nashana, over to both of you as we head towards the last few minutes of this interview. God bless. Thank I'll you. just remind our, our participants in the webinars, if you're here for the first time, just place your names in the chat. Uh, so our, just your email address, we'll be happy to add you to our mailing list so that you can be kept abreast of what's happening. If you're on Facebook, on YouTube, just give us your, your email addresses too. And we invite you to join us on the Zoom forum if you're able to, even after we have disconnected and go to the upfront and close with Nashana Lala. Over to you. Well, what a wonderful accolade from Mrs. Chong to you, Nashana. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That is a beautiful Amazing. endorsement. You know, and one of the things I was thinking is that, you know, we, we, we sort of finished talking about, we, we finished talking about sort of the, you know, what's difficult about the, about doing this role and having to, you know, be an, an encourager, but also, thinking, well, you know, things are really difficult. What keeps you up at night kind of thing. And then of course there is, I think when you're in these high powered roles, these trailblazer roles, there has to be balance. And so how do you balance yourself out? You know, what do you do to keep yourself on, on, the, um, on the up, I should say, really? What do you do outside of work? Spend time with my husband. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> No, no, it's really regardless of what position you are you are in, when you choose a life partner, it's important you choose someone who's always going to be there to support you. Mm -hmm. I mean, in these difficult times, you need support more than ever. So when I'm not at work, <laughs> we're at home. <laughs> but I mean, outside of that, I'm a reader, I'm a writer, I'm a cross stitcher, but what really unwinds me is, I mean, it's so simple, but it's just having a glass of wine with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing extraordinary just that simple it's about something having a safe space a place of contentment yes. uh that and, and and somebody that you can be with that you know who understands you who is there for you you know that yes. longevity in of trust and uh yes. you know and uh encourages your gifts in your work as well which is wonderful and so and if i was if I was to ask your husband what are three fun things about you, <laughs> say he would say I'm goofy. That's what that's what he would say, and he would probably say I'm an old soul because having been raised by my grandmother, you know you can't help it. My grandmother she taught you through saying, and of course a lot of them and parables, and you never understood them yeah. until you're you're older. And so when situation arises, one would just out of I can't control it just pops out <laughs> he just look at me and he knows where that's coming from <laughs> I mean he's in the other room he's busy doing some work but I think those were two of the things that he would say I mean yeah. we're not 33 years like Donovan or you know much more like Mrs. Strong but um there's blessing there's blessing on our union and he's always he's my biggest cheerleader he's yeah. always there supporting me regardless of what it is I mean we were together and I was traveling all over the place and mm -hmm. I would always find a way to connect for me to whatsapp him I mean back, back, back then you had Blackberry messenger oh so, yes that's right <laughs> carry a pigeon <laughs> So if I was in Geneva or if I was in Paris or wherever, we'd always be black there, you know. So he, he knows it. I think he understands that this is what God ordained me to do. And this is my role in this world. Everybody has a purpose. I mm. think he understands that this is my purpose. And so because God knew that this was my purpose, he gave me somebody who would understand and support that yes. purpose. <laughs> but just for everybody on to say that, you may not be on the board of an international organization and your day-to-day -day job might not be working for an NGO, but we all have a role to play and we can all make a difference, no matter how small it is. Hmm. We can all make a difference. And so you may not have had the experiences that I have had and being on all these boards and, you know, work. But I think it's important that we all realize that we can all make a difference just by giving up our time. There's always some place that can use our time. There's a lot of charities and you do not understand what 
half the difference half an hour of your time could be mm -hmm. it could be going to a children's home and reading to the children it could be going to a girl's home and speaking mm -hmm. to the girls there it's so it's so simple that i don't because it's so simple a lot of people think oh i have to have a lot of time and i have to have a lot of money no you don't it doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't take a lot of money to care and so mm -hmm. i just want everybody to know that we can make a difference and as mm -hmm. you were talking earlier karen and you were saying it was not selfish but you feel good when you can help people mm -hmm. and i mean it's as simple as you know when you see somebody and you give them a bright good morning i like your short you don't understand how simple things are that can make a difference. And so we're in a pandemic and outside of a pandemic, there's so many times we can get caught in so many things that's happening in our lives with our different challenges, you know, that comes. But I just want to encourage everybody that we can all make a difference. We all have a vision of what we want this world to be. And I want us all to know that we have a role to play in making that difference in creating the Jamaica and the world that we want to see. Absolutely. So, said. That's just a little plug. Said. And you know, the, the other thing that I think that's beautifully said about you, um, about your grandmother, you say some lovely things about her, about how she's influenced you. And, you know, it's, so it's important as uh, well, you know, just in terms of how you talk about your grandmother, about the importance of elders. And you talked about the, you know, some things that you take from her some of her parables. I think Miss Lou would say, we, that's our philosophy. We've got our own philosophy in parables. And, you know, somebody asked here, what was one of your favorite statements from your grandma? Okay, she had so, she had so much. I mean, one that immediately comes to mind, which might not be one of my favorite, but because there was so much, the one that just comes, I think anybody who is from the country will know this one, chicken Mary Hart the near. <laughs> Oh, that's, a, that's definitely going to be a new one for me. Please translate. That's not very positive. And it's not one of my favorite, but it's the one that comes, it comes to mind. That when you're so happy and everything's going, you know, good and everything, just be prepared for things to change in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened with COVID. We were going yeah. on our lives. And before you know it, we couldn't hang out with each other. We couldn't hug yeah. each other. But um I wish I knew you were going to ask that question so I could think long and hard about it. I think that's a perfect answer, <laughs> you know, because in a sense, we need to say to people, make every moment count, make every day count. I think we had a conversation like that earlier. Just make those moments that you talked about, even if it's good morning, it's on the phone or something, make those moments count to people. And those are things that, things that you, you do a lot for everybody as yeah. well. Another one that just came to me is that young bird don't know storm. And I spoke to you about being with the YWC and being with those older ladies. It's because there's so much we can learn from persons who are older than us. So when you say young bird don't know storm, the older persons that we interact with in whatever capacity, they've mm. been through whatever yeah. we've been through. Times have changed. We're doing things differently. However, the wealth of experience and knowledge that they have should not be undermined because mm. they've been through the stages of life. They have. I was just looking for my book over here to show um, some of my colleagues who, um, who uh, make poke fun at me when I ask them to translate. It's, it's Jamaican proverbs in actual fact. <laughs> Nishana, thank you so much indeed for your time today. We have been so blessed, as uh, Donovan and Faith has said. It has been a lovely evening. I uh, really got, um, had, a, had a wonderful time getting to know you and learned so much and feel very inspired, as I know many others who have been listening to you today and uh, endorsed by Mrs. Chong and everybody who knows you. Thank you so much. And we just wish the organization, the very best of uh, continual growth and, um, Thank you. and health. Thank you, Thank you so uh, much, Karen. You're so, welcome. so a few things coming out of the chat. Some P saying, this reminds me of the statement by the Governor General of Jamaica. There's nothing wrong with Jamaica that can't be fixed by what's right with Jamaica. Well, that's nice. And I, I, I was I was kicked off for a moment, but I don't know if you answered the question about how did you meet your husband. I didn't ask that question. Well, my actually, my husband was actually a journalist, 
So we we met through through our jobs. Okay, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> Grandma, give it a one do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I've heard> that. <laughs> All right, great. So you know, uh, people just love to hear a good love story. So who made the first move? It wasn't, I don't think there was a first move per se because we were friends. We were very good friends. And so we would have lunch together in a group and sometimes we would hang out just the two of us. So I don't think there was a first move, but I think I, I've always told him that the moment our relationship changed, this is really funny, sorry. He's going to kill me for saying this, but well, I, was home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was home and I wasn't feeling well. And he, he, was, he was going on a date, actually. And he stopped by to see how I was doing before. And, you know, yeah, I wasn't doing so badly. And, you know, I was sick and so he left. And within an hour, he was back and he brought back chicken soup. And I asked him, what happened to your date? And he's like, I just couldn't wait any longer. Apparently he was at the gate waiting and he knew I was home and I was sick. He went and got me chicken soup. And I told him that that was the moment our relationship moved from us being very good friends. Because we were friends, we knew what was going on in each other's lives, who was dating who. We were friends. But I think that moment was when our relationship changed and he's going to kill me. But <laughs> No, it's not. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, Nashana. So, wait, Nashana's heart is chicken soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so great, so great, so great. You know, um, we are so delighted that you chose, that you consented. You're so humble. You're very <laughs> articulate, very. Thank you, Donovan. Uh, compassionate, very supportive, you're very focused in life, and we are delighted that you said yes to our invitation um, when you were saying, but, but, but I don't know what we <laughs> recognize that there was much to you, and we are so grateful that you joined us here um, today. Uh, you Thank you, Donovan. Your grandmother, and evidently, God used your grandmother to prepare you to touch the people around the nations of the world. And you have, you have pursued the dream with such passion, with such focus, and we are delighted to have had you in this forum tonight. Um, chicken, it was my pleasure to be here. Story. Hey, somebody is giving you the title of your book, Chicken Soup, The Love Story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So, Nashana, we'd love to just take a moment to just pray over you. We believe so that much. God has great plans for your life. We believe that he's ordering your steps with all that has happened. Somebody's asking though, did any teacher or fellow student have a great impact on your path? I don't know if that's a teacher or a fellow student. That's a classmate of mine who went to the same high school and he's also a teacher. Okay. <laughs> so I can see <laughs> So I know he will agree with me when I say our vice principal, Mrs. Baker, he never said what impact, whether it was positive or negative, but our vice principal, Mrs. Baker, she was one who, she kept you in line. She, when it came to children, you couldn't bear from the path. She was very firm, to put it lightly. She was very, very firm. And she really, really kept you on the straight and narrow. So everybody who went to my high school will have a story about our vice principal, Mrs. Baker. You know, yeah, thank you so much. You know, this chicken soup thing, thing seems to be universal, you know, because somebody from Antigua is saying chicken soup does the trick every time. <laughs> I didn't know that back then. Uh, okay. Um, all right, great. Somebody is saying thanks. I'm familiar with the Honeybone, with the Honeybone, not the foundation. Foundation is relatively new and doing great things. So just connect the web, the, the email, the website is listed in the chat um, there. So just just um, check it out. So we're going to pray for you right now. Let's just bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Nashana. Thank you, Lord God, for the joy with which she has shared her test her, her life story today. Thank you, Lord, for the journey that you have had her on. Thank you, Lord, for her brilliance, for her beauty, for her dedication. Thank you, Lord God, that 
she has such deep desire to touch lives. Thank you for the opportunities that you have given her. And thank you for her faithfulness. I pray over her, Lord. I pray your protection upon her. I pray, Lord, that you just watch over her. I pray that you'd cover her under your wings. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless her, her marriage. Pray that you'd bless her husband. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to just bind them together, Lord. Father, I pray over Nashana's role at the Honeybone Foundation. I pray, Lord, that under her leadership, that you would bless abundantly. I pray, Lord, for uncommon divine favor. I pray that you will meet needs, that you'd fulfill the purpose of which you have called this organization into being. Thank you again for Mrs. Strong, who has been very deliberate about getting her involved and just uh, helping, getting her to just focus on this. I pray that you just bless her and bless the Honeyborn group, we pray. Father, we thank you for every person in this forum. I pray for those right now who are living with their grandmothers and are frustrated and feel that they can't take this lady. I ask that you just strengthen them and may they learn all they can. Lord, thank you for grandmothers who go the extra mile. Thank you, Lord, for just people who stand in the gap to support children. Thank you for the encouragement of so many grandmothers and the lives of so many children and so many people. Continue to bless Choose Life International Forum again. Continue to raise up Choose Life to fulfill the purpose for which you have called us. And as this message goes forth, we pray that you'll use it to transform many lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks again, Karen, for an excellent job. Thanks, Nashana, for being our special guest here. I want to say thanks to our Facebook friends and our YouTube friends. Thank you for sharing. We are on again every Sunday at 5 p.m. and every Monday at 6 p.m. We have been going, 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 and you have been with us. Set, let some people know what's going on. Help us to get the word out. Play a role. If you'd like to volunteer with Choose Life International, we invite you to give us your information, your contact information in the chat. We're looking for people to help us with our social media uh, focus. We're looking for people to help us in help just managing some of what's going on in the ministry. If you're a trained counselor, there's a place for you. We're talking about international development and, and expansion. If you have some time and you wanna help us to grow internationally, we invite your participation. If you believe in the work of Choose Life International, you'd like to support us financially, we ask you to indicate to us, to me in the chat, you can go to our website and donate through our website, or you can just send me a, a message on my WhatsApp, 876-869-3403, reminding you that you are in the forum of Choose Life International, the 111th webinar since we started in April of 2020. What a journey it has been. And I say big thank you to the many who have been there with us, who have supported us, who have given up your time and your talent. We are able to do this free of charge because people like Nashana donate their time to serving. The committee uh, donate their time to serving. And we are so grateful for those persons who continue to volunteer in this nation and the nations of the world. You can make a difference. Touch a life today. Volunteer to make a difference. Little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hand. Thank you again for sharing with us today. God bless. We're going to be closing down under, under the recording right now and up front and close with Nashana. Those of you on Facebook and YouTube that would like to join us, we invite you to come up front and close with Nashana Lala. <laughs>